Hey guys, it's JC Theater Yu-Gi-Oh here today, and I'm coming at you with a Fortune Fairy deck profile for you. Now, I try to run this deck as pure as possible, but I feel like in the future, uh, this may be able to be used more as a tech option in certain decks, especially spellcaster-focused decks. Just so you guys are aware, this week, I'm just going to be uploading deck profiles because I'm so excited about Battles of Legend Heroes Revenge coming out that I made a few decks that I want to share with you guys and I want to bash them out as quickly as possible uh, and upload them. So this week, we're not going to be having the usual Wednesday random video and Friday engine evaluation. It's just going to be deck profiles all week long for you guys. So without further ado, let's start this week off strong with Fortune Fairies. Now all of the fortune fairies share the same effect where if they're drawn, you can special summon them out onto the field and then they each have a unique effect. And they run the spectrum of all of the attributes as well as levels one through six. So first up we play three copies of the level one fortune fairy Hikari and she's the level one light monster and they also all have zero attack and defense. So this one's unique effect is that when she's special summoned from the hand, you can tribute a monster on your side of the field in order to special summon out a spellcaster level one from your deck onto the field. So you can special summon another copy of Hikari or a little spicy combo kind of deal that I'll show you a little later in the deck. Up next, I play two of the level two fire, Fortune Fairy N. When she special summoned from the hand, you can select one set card your opponent controls and destroy it. I play one of the level three wind monster, which is going to be a uh, fortune fairy hue. And she takes one of your banished spellcasters and adds it back to your hand. The reason why I'm playing some funky ratios is that I'm playing three of the good cards and I'm actually not even playing the dark level five, but ultimately all of these are hard once per turn, so you don't want to draw too many at, during one turn because you can only special summon them once when they're drawn that turn. So next up, I play three Fortune Fairy Sui, and when she's special summoned from the hand, she can uh, banish one monster on the field until your next the standby phase of your next turn, and then it comes back onto the field. And since we do have a quick play card that special summons fortune fairies out, this also adds a level of disruption if you special summon her out on your opponent's turn. And then finally, like I said, we're skipping the level 5 to the level 6. Fortune fairy Chi. Chi is a little... I'm on the fence about it because when she special summoned, both you and your opponent can draw a card. So she helps get to your place faster because drawing cards is everything in this deck more than usual for any deck but since you're giving your opponent a draw it's kind of a double-edged sword but personally i like it in the pure build at least and then for the spicy option we run three effect veiler if you draw this it's an effect veiler of course and then if it's in your deck you can special summon it out with hikari's effect and since it's a tuner you can go into some synchro plays i'll show you when we get to the extra deck finally for the last two monsters in the deck I run two Blue Boys, Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. When he's normal summoned or flipped face up, you can add a Spellbook spell from your deck to your hand. And then on to the spells. The Spellbook card you're going to search is more than likely going to be Spellbook of Secrets, which itself is a searcher, which you're going to bring out one of the three Spellbooks of Knowledge. So we run two of the uh, Magician of Prophecies and then two Secrets and then three Knowledge for you guys because this just adds to draw power. And then some Recursion going on. I have two World Legacy Succession. And then on to some Fortune Fairy support. We have that Quick Play Special Summon I told you guys about, which is three Unacceptable Result which lets you just special summon out a fortune fairy from your hand if you control a spellcaster monster. So this just helps for your fortune fairies that you didn't draw, like maybe you got them in your opening hand or something of that nature to where you couldn't use their effects. So this just helps bring those out. Three, Lucky Loan. Lucky Loan's interesting and is the reason why I play the one level three monster as well as just like I try to play all of them except like the level five. The level five, the issue I have is the fact that 
it banishes a spellcaster from your deck and I understand that then the level three is supposed to grab that banished spellcaster but honestly I don't know I feel like that's a little too slow even for a deck like this but lucky loan lets you if you have a fortune fairy on your field you can special summon out a spellcaster from your deck one level lower and then on your next turn you can't normal summon or special summon except spellcaster monsters so you like loan out a summon for the turn but since the entire deck is uh, spellcasters it doesn't really matter and then next up miracle stone miracle stone is kind of the uh not win con of the deck per se but it makes the deck decently playable what it does is all spellcasters on your side of the field gain 500 attack for each uniquely named fortune fairy on your side of the field but sadly you can only have one miracle stone on the field at a time and then once per turn if there's a battle involving one of your fortune fairies, you get to draw a card. Since the fortune fairies swarm so much, and since we're running multiple different names of the fortune fairies, they're able to swarm a bunch of different fortune fairies on the field, so you can get their attacks up to a pretty decent amount, at least 1,500 to 2,000. And with this letting you draw a card, it just adds to the whole digging deeper and getting the fortune fairy effects off. Speaking of Fortune Fairy effects off, we play the one Upstart Goblin, the one evil Upstart Goblin. If you guys don't know what Contract with Don Thousand is, it makes you and your opponent lose a thousand life points and you both draw a card. And then on top of that, when you draw after this is played, uh, while a player's, um, their hand is revealed, right? So when a player's spell card in their hand is revealed by this effect, that player cannot normal summon or set monsters. But you could always just set your spell cards, so it works out pretty okay. It's just a draw to get you a little deeper into the deck. Next up, we play the two Wonder Wand, just for, of course, added drawing. And the final three cards of the main deck are three Pinpoint Landing, since all of the fortune fairies have a way to special summon themselves out from the hand onto the field. So this is definitely good. And again, it just adds to the drawing power of this deck. For the extra deck, it's a little unique in the sense that I only have three recommendations for you. And that's Link Karibo. So that way your Hikari or your Effect Veiler can go into Link Karibo. As well as Daybreaker. The Shining Magical Warrior, just because this deck is completely spellcasters. And then finally, the cool tech option is the Ib World Chalice Justicar. And Ib is cool because you can use both the Effect Veiler and the level 4 uh, Fortune Fairy in order to bring this out. And then you can search the uh, World Legacy Succession from your deck, which is definitely really cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile today. I know I didn't go crazy in depth with many things, but ultimately it's literally just draw as much as possible in order to special summon these fairies out. This definitely isn't a crazy powerful deck, but I find it very fun. I know a lot of people also like the artwork. Granted, I'm not into like the whole uh, chibi aesthetic that they are but i appreciate the color scheme that they are and how they're all like the elements i guess i have a soft spot for that i know element sabers are also a deck i really like so i guess i'm finding out now i just like elemental decks but for the most part i've seen some people mess around with invoked versions of this deck and that's definitely powerful i just wanted to play a little uh pure version kind of test the waters with how the deck's supposed to be played like I said, it's definitely nothing meta breaking or anything like that, but it's an interesting gimmick for a deck. And I think it's really cool of um, Konami and Yu-Gi-Oh to make these cards that were like normal monsters in the anime actually have a unique and interesting effect. So thank you so much for watching, guys. This has been my Fortune Fairy deck profile. Stay tuned for the rest of the week where more deck profiles from Battles of Legend Heroes Revenge are going to come out. And that includes, I'll give you a little uh, sneak peek of sometime this week. Where is it? Here it is. TGs as well. Not just the new decks, but also the major new support. So thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in the next one. I'm JC Theater Yu-Gi-Oh! See ya.